Rose Quartz used to climb that hill every spring and tend to the moss at the top. But now that Rose is gone, the moss is on the move. Is this one of those plants that Rose brought to life and it now serves her? Or is this some kind of magical moss that spreads and devours whatever it touches when planted? Either way, you'd think that if the moss was located at least semi-close to civilization where humans could potentially find it, and you'd think that if Rose knew that she was going to have to give up her physical form, she either wouldn't plan it to protect humans from it, or if it was too late, she'd move it to where it wants to go. But no, I guess covering organic life forms in something that could suffocate them is too beautiful to ignore. Aww. This is why I get up in the morning. Your life is sad. Don't hold back. She's standing maybe 15 feet from you. If she didn't hold back, she'd probably throw that shit to the moon. You know, maybe their police tape would be a bit more effective if they covered this huge opening right here. There's another rock right there. Why not just wrap more tape around it? Get me Pete. Get me Za. Does he have to... Well, I guess not sing this time, more like rap horribly about every aspect of his life. Don't worry though, I'm sure his hit single, Taking Me a Piss, is still in the works five and a half years later. That's the plan, Steven. Steven. Don't go in there right now! Ah uh, yes, don't go get food right now because there's people in there that I don't want to have to interact with. I don't think they saw you. Steven, you were blocking me with your big hair, ah! Ah, uh, he's gonna wreck everything. Lars' voice should be muffled here. Also, in an earlier shot, there were businesses lined up next to Fish Stew Pizza. But now in this shot, they've all disappeared. Hey, Lars! Yo! Where'd you get that Brad shirt, Steven? I have no idea where any of my clothes come from. Who needs an interesting answer, am I right? There's nothing lame about seatbelt safety. Said literally nobody ever. In this shot, the car is driving on the right side of the road. But then in the next shot, the car is driving on the left side of the road for some reason. I love babies. Will you look at that, a baby? Where the hell did they find that baby? Buck is sitting to the right of Steven and Lars in this shot. But in the next shot, he switched with Lars for some reason. In this shot, the police tape is tied in the middle in between both rocks. Which is wrong, because earlier, it's tied more towards the left rock, and later in the same shot, it corrects itself. It's one thing to make an honest mistake, but it's another thing to make a mistake and then zoom in on it. Police tape. Awesome. So he's all about seatbelt safety, but the prospect of trespassing is completely fine to him. Lars somehow phases through this police tape when he's coming from behind the rock in this shot. Who wants to go for a swim? Who looks at that water and says, yeah, that's some proper swimming water right there. Now I'm never going to be friends with these guys. Priorities, Lars. I think this scene would have a lot more impact if instead of Lars worrying about being friends with the cool kids, he was actually worried that they might be fucking dead. This might have actually made his outburst a little bit more impactful. What do you know about my mom? I didn't even get to know my mom! But I do know she saw beauty in everything! Even in stuff like this! And even in jerks like you! You know, this is a good moment and all, but it's kind of deflated by the fact that not only does Lars stay completely the same after this, but Steven just kind of forgets this mom comment really quickly. You could argue he's trying to see the beauty in Lars, but there's giving someone the benefit of the doubt, and then there's just being fucking oblivious. Lars gets no consequences for being an asshole to Steven here, nor does he grow or change even slightly from this. So that just makes this feel a little cheap. I'm still gonna take off some sins, but I think this moment could have been done better and should have impacted Lars and Steven's relationship more. Buckling their seatbelts is just going to make getting them out of the car slower. I get the call back, but considering the urgency of the situation, that shouldn't exactly be a priority. I know I'm getting petty with this, and this isn't against the show itself, but Wiki, this is not an error. Lars telling Steven to put the car in reverse is just common car knowledge. You don't need to know how to drive a stick shift to know to put the car in reverse when you want to go backwards. The Wiki is a really useful resource a good 98% of the time, but sometimes I see something like this, and I have to wonder what info gets vetted before they let it on the page. Oh! That does not sound like Steven slowly getting muffled by the moss. That sounds like they directed Zack to just say Lar. 
This is a genuinely gorgeous set piece, and the music propels it into incredible territory. No matter what criticism I throw at Steven Universe's plot, or characters, or sound, or anything like that, I think we can always count on the visuals being one of the best parts of the show. However, according to Wikipedia, moss is a flowerless plant. So unless Rose imbued the stuff with some kind of magical flower seeds or something, it should be impossible for it to bloom anything. I think I died. You most certainly should have, considering that you went without oxygen for at least a few minutes, maybe even more. Also, why are they chanting so quietly? They sound like they're whispering. That's nasty. I don't like nasty stuff. Yeah, man. Living free. I like it. Oh, that snake is nasty. Now let's get some spaced out beats up in here. Man, I'd beat all the G's in there like three million times. The lack of daddy kisses in my life made me who I am. I'm above the law. Oh, yeah, Lars. Well. I can totally rave to this. I know this may seem cool, but it's actually a lot less cool than you think. 